Welcome to Corralling the Chaos podcast, where we talk publicly about the things you're worried about privately. My name is Angela Lea, and I'm your host. This is the event industry podcast for companies and crew, where we're going to go deep and nothing is off limits. Welcome back to Corralling the Chaos. Today's episode is going to be short and sweet and is actually going to end with a little homework assignment. But don't worry, it's a homework assignment that's going to be quick. And most importantly, it can pay off with dollars going straight to your bottom line. So pay attention. All right. um, Around here, we obviously talk about things uh, that really primarily impact your cost of goods sold. Uh, People, of course, being a big component of that. And today we want to talk about rate cutting. But don't worry, I promise we're not talking about cutting pay rates. We're going to talk about cutting a different type of rate. And I want to talk about something that could be costing you two to three extra points on your margin, and you may not even know that it's lurking there, hidden behind just having wrong information. I'm talking about workers' comp. But before you roll your eyes and you think, I got that, let's see if you can answer these three to four questions. Question number one, what is your experience mod? Question number two, what is your loss ratio? Question number three, what's the four-digit workers' comp code that you have? And the fourth question is, are you paying workers' comp on hours that are not worked but paid? So I'm talking about those position minimums or guaranteed day rates that you're paying. All four of those things can have a drastic impact on your workers' comp cost. So let's kind of take apart each one of those. Number one, what is your experience mod? You should find out what that is. And an experience mod is basically, what is your rating relative to others in the industry? How safe are you within the event industry? How do your claims compare? Which leads me to the second thing. What are your loss ratios? A loss ratio is, um, you know, what have you paid out in claims divided by the premiums that you've been paying out? And so if that loss ratio is anything above a 0.6, you're probably not getting good rates because your insurance carrier, to break even, they they try to be around 0.6, meaning, right, that extra 40% is going to pay to cover the administrative costs, the tail on the claims, all those sorts of things. So look to see what your loss ratio is. Um, Again, if it's over 0.6, you probably got a higher rate. The third one is, what is the four-digit code? This is one of the biggest needle movers. The workers' comp code for our industry is, get your pen and paper out, 9154. Now, on your schedule of operations or your declaration page, um, if you see that, you're going to see that it says theater all other employees. So just like our industry doesn't have our own SIC code, yet again, our industry doesn't have a true formalized workers' comp code. But that is the workers' comp code that is standard for our industry. We see declaration pages that have furniture builders, uh, pyrotechnics, all different types of things. And so make sure that your code is 9154 for all states that you operate in. And the way you can find that is on your insurance. It's called a declarations page or a schedule of operations. You'll see your office employees will say 8810 clerical. You're going to pay less for them than you would in your people in your field because obviously the risk is lower. But that's going to be one of the biggest needle movers. And then the fourth thing that you can look at is, are you paying on hours worked, not paid? Do you have a way to even track that? So for example, I pay a camera op 10 hours a day to come in, run camera. My day might only last seven hours. Of course, you're going to pay him 10 hours, right? That's his daily minimum. That's what you're guaranteeing him. But if you're paying him that at 40 or $45 an hour and you're paying workers comp on 10 hours, it's not necessary. You, you weren't exposed for those extra three hours. And so look into ways that you can see, can you track hours worked versus hours paid. A lot of time systems out there um, should track that. Many don't because that's not a normal thing unless you're in our industry to have a discrepancy between hours work versus hours paid. But that's the fourth thing that you should be looking at. So again, what is your experience mod? What are your loss ratios? If you don't have an answer to either one of those, find that because if you have really strong loss ratios and you're still paying a high rate, 
shop it around. It can be really expensive. Again, the four digit code is 9154. And then look for ways to track hours worked versus hours paid. So when you go through that workers' comp audit at the end of the year, you're not paying on the full boat that you've been paying. Another thing to look at is cash flow. Since cash is so important, the cost to borrow is so high today. So another thing to look at is a pay-as-you-go workers' comp program versus at the beginning of the year, I'm estimating I have a million dollars in payroll, and then they ask you to pay that up front. Then you go through your audit at the end of the year, you typically owe or you're reimbursed versus do it pay-as-you-go. It's a little bit more predictable. You're not outlaying cash that you then would get back later. So that's another just kind of extra tip in there for you. So hopefully you can find good things in that. would love to hear stories from you all on what you find, what you're able to save. Because every time we go through this exercise with our clients, they're always able to find something, at least a state or two where they're coded incorrectly. So just use that as leverage, be educated, be knowledgeable when you're talking to your broker on exactly what you're looking for. All right, that's it. If you like what you hear, please be sure to hit subscribe. If you have questions, comments, feedback, reach out to us at podcast at lasso.io. Thanks, everybody.